Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my March book haul. Alright guys, let's just jump straight into things. As always, we'll start off with all of the library books that I picked up in the month of March. So I picked up a total of six books in from the library. The first of those is Armadale by Wilkie Collins. So I've read two previous books by Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White, which I love and is one of my fave classics ever, and The Moonstone, which I also really enjoyed. So this is one that I've wanted to read um, for a while, so I decided this would be the next classic that I pick up. All I know about this is that it's about two cousins, I think, who have the same name, like first and last name, and one cousin's father murdered the other cousin's father, and then there's some, some kind of deathbed confession. I'm not too sure. This doesn't look like it's too long of a book, but it is actually, oh, like close to 700 pages, but that includes some appendixes, so I'm not sure. Exactly. But it's also one of those books where the text is super small and really cramped. So I think this is going to be quite a dense read, but hopefully I enjoy it as much as I enjoyed The Woman in White and The Moonstone. Next, I picked up Vengeance by Megan Miranda. This is the second book in the Fracture duology. The first book was Fracture. Um, this was about a teenage girl who fell through the ice and basically was dead for 11 minutes, but was resurrected and... She can now sense death. Um, so it's only a duology. The first book wasn't like overly fantastic, but I did enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to finishing off this duology. Next, I have Spark by Rachel Craw. This is one of the books that I need to read to complete one of my goals, which is to read 10 of the first 20 books that I marked as to read on Goodreads. So I marked this as to read on Goodreads a really long time ago. I have no idea where I heard about it or anything like that. And I don't recall ever hearing anyone speak about this but it actually has a very interesting sounding synopsis so it says Evie doesn't have a choice one day she's an ordinary 17 year old girl grieving for her mother the next she's a shield the result of a decades old DNA decades old experiment gone wrong bound by DNA to defend her best friend from an unknown killer the threat could come at home at school anywhere all Evie knows is that it will be a fight to the death and then there's Jamie irresistible off limits so I'm presuming that this is YA and it's kind of a, an urban fantasy type thing maybe because it seems like it's set like at high school but something to do with her being some kind of you know guardian for her best friend and there's obviously some kind of forbidden love. I don't know, it sounds like it could be really interesting. Next I have Becoming Darkness by Lindsay Francis Brambles. This is a book that I was actually approved for on NatGalley a really, really long time ago. But again, I've mentioned this recently. It was one of those weird ones where you can't download it to your Kindle and you can only read it um, like kind of as a PDF. And I didn't know at that stage how to get them onto my phone. And so I never read this. And now the document has expired so that I can't download it again. So I never got to read it. So I decided to get this from the library so that I can read it, so that I can post a review on NetGalley. Um, this is an alternate history where Hitler released some kind of virus during World War II that turned 200 million people, I think it is, into vampires. And I believe it's later now, and there is a girl, a teenage girl, who is an immune, which means that she um, carries a genetic mutation that protects her from the virus. Um, and But most people these days do have that genetic mutation, but then her best friend is brutally murdered and... Through that, she discovers some kind of generations deep conspiracy. I don't know. It sounded really, really interesting. Um, like, I obviously requested this from Neck Alley a really long time ago. This is really, like, a really heavy hardback. And it's almost 500 pages. So, hopefully, this is really interesting. Next, I have Doubt Volume 2 by Yoshiki Tonagai. Um, this is the second book um, the second like manga collection, the final one in this um, manga collection that is kind of a horror thriller about a group of teenagers who are playing this mobile phone game where there is um, one wolf and the rest of the characters are rabbits, but you don't know who the wolf is and you're supposed to try to figure it out. And they all meet up in person to play the game and then they start dying and they realize that the wolf is real and who is it, yada yada. I may cheat 
on my normal TBR rules and push this up my TBR because I really loved the first volume and this is there's only two and I'm worried that I'm already starting to forget like which character is which and exactly what happened in the first one and I want to read and complete this before I forget everything but yeah I really really enjoyed this so looking forward to being able to finish off this manga series and finally from the library I have Fathomless by Jackson Pierce this is the third book in the fairy tale retelling series and all I know about this is that this one is a little mermaid retelling I don't know kind of what the twist on the story is but um it'll just be some kind of YA bit of romance in their little mermaid retelling so hopefully this is really interesting as well now let's touch on the ebooks that I purchased in the month of March. I actually purchased five ebooks. The first of those is Secret Sister by Emile Gamble. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure what drew me to this one. It was free, um, but I don't download like every free Kindle book I come across. But for some reason I was drawn into this one. It's a women's fiction and it's about two best friends and one of them is married and has a husband. I think it might be historical as well. I'm not sure. Um, and then something happens that kind of throws all their lives into chaos. I'm not really sure. Um, like I say, this isn't my typical kind of ebook that I would purchase, but for some reason I did. And so at some point in future, I will read it. Next, I purchased a copy of The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. This is one that I saw on a, um, a deal. So I got for quite cheap. This one is an adult thriller that's been going around booktube recently. And all I know about it is it's about one woman who is jealous, I believe, of another's perfect life. And I think it's going to have some kind of single white female vibes really into that. I also purchased both Stillhouse Lake and Kill Man Creek by Rachel Kane. This is the first and second book in a thriller series. And it's about, the first book is about a woman whose husband is a serial killer. And when it's discovered... He obviously like goes to jail and there's a lot of people who think that this woman must have known what her husband was doing and this was like somehow an accomplice. And so she ends up like having to change her name and like her, so her and her kids move to this small town. And then I think people start dying in the same manner that her husband was killing people. And so it's all about that. Um, it gets pretty good reviews and I was really excited for it. And I think both of these books were less than $1.50 on Kindle. So I was really excited to be able to get both of them. The final book that I purchased on Kindle is The Broken Ones by Sarah A. Denzel. The reason I was um, drawn into this one is the name Sarah A. Denzel. There's another book, I think it's called Silent Child, that's been getting really good reviews recently that I'm also interested in reading. And I saw this on there for pretty cheap. And it's another adult thriller. And all I know about this one is that it's about a woman who is being stalked. So those are all of the ebooks that I purchased in March. And now moving on to all of the books that I purchased um, in physical copy in the month of March. So I mentioned in my previous book haul that I'm trying to stick really strictly to my one kind of book depository order a month until at least June when my birthday. And I did pretty well on that this month. There's a couple of little exceptions here, which we'll discuss when we get to it. But first we do have my monthly book depository order. The first of those that I have is Hidden Huntress by Danielle L. Jensen. This is the second book in the Malediction trilogy. Um, the first book was The Stolen Songbird. It's a YA fantasy that has something to do with trolls. Um, and I've always been pretty intrigued about this, and it gets pretty good reviews. I do own the first book, so I finally picked up this second book. The next book that I picked up from that order is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. Hutchison, Hutchinson. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. This is a YA contemporary about a gay teen who... I think his boyfriend has recently committed suicide or something and his life's not going that great. And then he is abducted by aliens, I think. And they give him this option where there's like a button that he can press. Like basically they say the whole world's going to be destroyed. But if he presses this button, like the world will be saved. But he doesn't know if the world's worth saving. This gets amazing reviews. I've been interested in this for a really long time. So I'm really excited to finally have my hands on a copy. The final book from the Book Depository Order was Saga Volume 6 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I've been slowly purchasing physical copies of the editions of Saga that I've read, so this was in the next one I needed to pick up. I then have my first book that was kind of an exception, which is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I bought this in physical copy, and I knew I was going to do this because I bought the first two in store in Australia, and so I wanted to get this third one while it was in store so that I could be sure that my editions were going to like match and be the same size and such. I didn't want to end up ordering it online and getting a different 
copy and it's pretty cheap to buy like not super cheap but for a new release book you can get these fairly cheap in like target so that's what i did i do own the first two books in the trilogy I haven't read them yet but i'm hoping that maybe i'll get to it this year i'm not too sure um but yes i picked up this one and then the final book that i picked up and was another little exception is storm glass by maria v schneider so with this one i had a voucher for qbd for five dollars off uh no winnie Sorry, I had a voucher for $5 off, but in order to use the voucher, you had to spend $40, and I was like, oh, I don't want to spend $40 because I shouldn't be buying books, but my mum said that there were some books that I could buy for her for Mother's Day, which is not for a little while, but she said I could buy them and then just hold on to them and give them to her for Mother's Day, and so I did that, and this is the only book that I purchased for myself, and I did this and used the $5 coupon on this book because this book, for some reason, on a book depository constantly goes out of stock. And I wanted to be sure that I could get it um, in the edition that matches my um, trilogy of the, the Poison Study, the study series. Because this is a separate series, technically, but it's kind of like Cassandra Clare, where I understand you have to read, like, the first three books in that series, then read this trilogy, then read the next three books in that series. It kind of is all interlinked. And so I just wanted to be sure that I got the matching editions. Um, and so, yeah, I picked this one up and I have all the excuses in the world. So those are all of the books that I purchased in the month of March. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below how your guys' March book purchasing month went. I'm doing pretty well at sticking to my, like, two books since I've put myself on the ban, like, over what I said is pretty good. There's another one that I know I'll be purchasing in store for the same reasons I purchased Subsidio in May. But apart from that, I'm hoping I can stick pretty strictly to this book depository order until June because my TBR is just so, so big. But yes, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, how your purchasing's been going. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.